I made a shiny Pokemon Hunter that makes finding the rarest Pokemon a breeze. For this video, I thought I'd do something a little different to my usual game dev and mess around with an electronics kit, an Arduino, and one of my favorite games of all time. So let's get straight into it. I went my entire time playing Pokemon without ever finding a shiny Pokemon naturally. So back in the Gen 6 era, I started hunting for shinies spending hours and hours encountering regular creatures until finally that slightly different colored Pokemon would appear. If you have no idea what a shiny Pokemon is, it's basically an alternate color scheme for a Pokemon and has a 1 in 8192 chance of appearing in Gens 2 to 5 and 1 in 4096 from Gen 6 onward. So playing through the games without seeing one is rather likely. However, once you've played through every game multiple times, it starts to get a bit silly. Each generation also has some unique methods to increase your chances. Gen 2 featured shiny breeding alongside the Lake of Rage Gyarados, Gen 4 had the Poke Radar, and Gen 6 had chain fishing, which are great ways to increase your odds, but also take a very long time. So I thought I would combine my love of Pokemon with my skill of programming and very basic electronics to create a shiny hunting machine capable of performing these actions over and over again until a shiny pops up. I actually made this design originally back in 2018, I think, which was seven years ago. That doesn't make sense. But now with more programming know-how and an actual sense of how to make a video, I thought I'd bring it back to life and show you guys how it works. So first, let's go over the hunts I'm going to be making this little guy do today. The first is going to be a shiny starter in Pokemon Sapphire. This is the one I ran before and managed to get a shiny Torchic, but only after 42 thousand resets and five uncatchable shiny Poochiena in that time. How this hunt works is very simple. You save the game right in front of Professor Birch's bag, open the bag and take your starter of choice. For this go around I'm going to be taking Torchic again because he's the one I chose first time I ever played Gen 3 and also I haven't wired up the arrows so I can't even select the other two. When you send it out into battle you can see if your starter is shiny or not. If the Torchic is normal, you simply soft reset the game, which takes you back to the main menu, load up and open the bag again until it's shiny. Like I just mentioned, the Poochiena you fight against can also be shiny in this encounter. However, there's nothing you can do with it as you don't have Pokeballs yet. So don't get too attached. The second hunt will be the mythical Pokemon Shaman in Pokemon Pearl. This process is very similar to the Sapphire Starter by saving the game right in front of the encounter, starting the fight and checking if it's shiny. I'm not going to make the robot fight and capture the shiny because the machines should never have that much power, but it'll do a great job of finding it. So now we've laid out what it's going to do, let's talk about the slightly more complicated part, how it's actually going to do it. I'm going to be using an Arduino for the processing and with a basic electronics kit, building a fairly simple circuit. The first step is to design all the features of the circuit, starting with the input. I need the board to be able to directly input commands into the DS I'm using and that can be done in two ways. The first is the non-invasive way, which I would recommend if you don't want to risk damaging your console, and that is to use little servo motors with levers to press down on the buttons, simulating a player pressing down on them. To go down this route you would have to attach the motors in some way be it a 3D printed case, some janky cardboard frame, or something in between, like Lego. I built this little demo to show you what I mean, but I didn't have enough motors on hand to fully control this 3DS, but you get the idea. When I want a button press to occur, it pings down the motor, before returning it to its normal position. For this DS, and for a Game Boy Advanced SP in the past, I went for the more extreme approach. On the motherboards of the consoles, Nintendo kindly included test pins for each input. These pins were designed to be used by the QA team at the factory, and by sending a signal to these pins, the button press would be triggered. And luckily, with a bit of mad science, by soldering wires to these pins and sending a pulse through an Arduino, I can input controls to the board directly. I'll get to the programming a bit later, but trust me, this works. 60% of the time, it works every time. The next feature that the machine needs is the actual ability to spot a shiny. And again, there's multiple ways to do this. One way I've seen done before is by using a webcam that's watching the screen. You can measure the color values of specific pixels that you know will be one color if regular and another if shiny. And then simply tell the machine to stop if you detect the shiny coloring. 
but that's very complex and requires knowledge of the camera detection, image processing and whatnot, and also requires some input for each shiny. You would have to pick which pixels are being measured and tell it what colors to look out for or write some calibration code that compares the current sprite against the previous one, seeing if anything has changed. Luckily for me, there's actually a much easier way. You see, when a Pokemon is shiny, the sparkle animation plays, and this takes some time, which means that the time taken to start the battle is different when there's a shiny or not. So we need to measure the time taken from when the encounter starts to when the shiny sparkle ends, and that is done with a photoresistor. This measures the amount of light it can see at any one time, and by pressing it up to the screen in very specific places, you can tell when a battle begins. In Pokemon Sapphire, for example, the menu at the bottom of the screen, which is white, only appears over the blue background once the battle begins. So as soon as a high enough value from the photoresistor appears, you know the battle has started. And by timing that, you can determine if it's shiny or not. Great, so there's a nice and simple way to look out for shinies. For a bit of extra fluff, I also added an LED that lights up when a shiny appears, a reset button for, for false positive triggers, and a nice little screen that displays the amount of resets it's on. Here's what this mess looks like in real life, and now you can see why I use diagrams to show this working instead. So I've built the machine, let's go over the programming for it. This is all done inside Arduino's IDE, a really nice piece of software that allows you to write, verify, and upload code to your Arduino controllers. In here, you can use the serial monitor to print debug lines to know if your code is actually running and working as intended. One of the nice features of this software is the ability to download new libraries right from the menu, and that is going to come in handy later. But for now, let's program out the basics. The first thing to do is set up the inputs, and I've wired them to the digital pins 6 to 11. Each pin on an Arduino can be read as either an input or output, with a few modes for different uses. And for these, I need them to be an output, so I have a little loop that goes through all of the pins, sets them to be an output, and also sets their state to high. Because for some science electro wizardry, the test pins are inverted, so a high signal is the off state, and a low signal is on. I also set up the buttons for a false positive, and to clear the reset count, as input underscore pull up which uses their internal pull-up resistor, so I don't have to add one to the circuit, as well as all of the code for initializing the LCD screen. For the display, I'm using the Liquid Crystal I squared C library, because that one seemed to work, and I've also included EEPROM, so that I can save the reset count to the Arduino's memory, meaning if it loses power, it won't lose what number it's at. With all that, the system is ready to control. So like I said with the torture hunt, it's literally just a soft reset and then spam A until you get to the battle. So I set up some basic functions for pressing the buttons as well as soft resetting by triggering pins 8 to 11, which are A, B, start and select. At the start of the loop, the game soft resets to ensure it's at the right place and then it starts the pattern. The first thing is a four second delay because it takes a little while to load up the game and then presses A a few times every 1.4 seconds. I basically pick the delay lengths at random but they were short enough to not waste time, but long enough to actually load the next part. So it seems good to me. After another short delay, the game is loaded and the player's right in front of the bag. Three more A presses here to select Torchic, and then a 2.5 second delay to allow the battle to load up. And just like that, I've automated the controls to select my starter. Now comes the shiny detection system. When the battle starts, it stores the current system time in milliseconds and then goes into a while loop which waits until the reading from analog pin 1 is over 615. Analog pin 1 is the photoresistor, and 615 is a random number I found to be the sweet spot, as it's above the brightness of the blue background, but below the white battle menu. While it's in the loop, it simply spams A, as it also needs to skip the first dialogue with the Puchiena appearing. I did it this way because it's kind of cool to find the shiny Puchienas in this encounter too. Once it breaks out of the loop, it reads that time again, and by subtracting the start time from the end time, I get the total time it took for the encounter. And if that time is above 6.6 .6 seconds, then it's very likely that a shiny appeared. Again, I just timed the encounter length and added a few hundred milliseconds just to pad it out so it's longer than a normal one, shorter than a shiny one. If the Pokemon is normal, which is obviously very likely, it loops back to the start, soft resetting to try again. 
If it finds a shiny, however, it calls the found shiny function, which sets the found ball to true, stop the loop, and turns on the indicator LED. Now that the found shiny ball is true, the main loop does nothing except listens for the reset button, which then reverts the system back to normal if pressed. And here is where I come in to take control, beat up the Puchiena, and save the game with the new shiny Torchic in hand. This Torchic took 6,183 resets to find, which is under odds and quite far away from the 42,000 it took last time. This whole project wasn't a complete disaster, it actually worked. If for some reason you want to try this at home, I'll leave the janky code and diagrams down below. But honestly, I would recommend looking up how to use servo motors instead. And just for good measure, like I said, I wrote the same thing but for Shaman in Pearl. This requires a special event item which you can still get with some custom server trickery. I'm not going to go into too much detail into the hunt because it's basically exactly the same, but with a different combo for the soft reset and different timings on spamming A. But here it is, a shiny little hedgehog standing there ready to be caught. And that is my ultimate shiny hunting machine. Obviously, I know that this isn't quote unquote legit shiny hunting and that it's an insult to the purists or whatever. I just think it's quite cool to play around with electronics in such a weird use case. But anyway, let me know what you think of this project in the comments down below. Leave a like and subscribe to boost my ego and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.